On the last few new car shows, we got our hands on some pretty cool new cars. This time, I got to drive a car so new that it's not even technically made yet. That's right, my babies. Daddy drove a prototype. <laughs> on the outside, it's just a flat black Mazda 3. But on the inside lives one of the most advanced combustion engines ever. I want you guys to do me a little favor really quick. Forget everything you know about combustion engines. This one goes suck, squirt, vortex, compress. Tons of weird stuff, squirt again, lean out, press bang. I wanna point out that I didn't say spark. Today, we're talking about Mazda's Sky Active X, the future of the internal combustion engine. Zoom, zoom, muchachos. First things first, this is by far the most expensive car I have ever driven or will probably ever drive. It is a $10 million car, which they told me after I drove it around Newport for about three hours. I could have wrecked this whole thing. It's literally worth more than donut. I could have put 15 people out of work. That's like at least seven kids who aren't getting Christmas this year. <laughs> because Mazda let Uncle James drive a $10 million car and he bottomed it out on a speed bump. <laughs> the amazing thing about the prototype isn't how fast it goes and it isn't an amazing rumbling from the exhaust. The craziest thing about this $10 million car is that it feels normal. Must be nice feeling normal. It felt a lot like the current Mazda 3, which is exactly what the engineers set out to do. They wanted to make an engine that was super efficient in any rev range. You get great mileage even when you're ringing it out. That means you don't have to drive like your grandma to get the EPA claimed MPG. You can drive like my grandma. Mazda is sort of an outlier in the environmentally friendly, high MPG, low emissions game. While most companies are focusing on hybrid and electric technologies, Mazda has decided to make the most efficient internal combustion engine possible. I mean, what do you expect? These are the same guys who said, hey, we should power a car with a magic triangle. Okay, so how does this ding dong thing work? Disclaimer, I'm about to use a lot of words that I don't know the definition of. At times it might seem a little technical or that I might be speaking outside of my realm of understanding. I'm lazy. But pay attention because I promise it's very, very interesting. Now you might know that diesel engines are more efficient because it takes less fuel to make the boom. The compression is so high that it actually ignites the fuel without a spark plug. Thing is, their emissions suck. They shoot a ton of crap out in the air that causes cancer and kills all the trees and stuff. The freaking glaciers all melted and suddenly I got a beachfront property. Boom, boom, raise the rent, raise the rent. Mazda set their sights on diesel-like efficiency from a much cleaner burning gasoline engine with a thing called high compression combustion ignition or HCCI. Basically, a gas engine with no spark. Fudge. Until now, this was impossible because gas Gasoline is less stable at these higher compressions. We couldn't control when the boom was gonna happen. Boom go too soon, your engine goes kabloom. It's called ping, pre-ignition. Bad news for baby, the engine's the baby. Okay. HCCI has a limited range of application. It's only dependable when the pistons are moving really quickly because the load requirements are much lower. For things like idling or accelerating from a stop, it doesn't work. Kabloom. Night night baby. Mazda realized they could correct this using a thing called variable spark ignition. Think VTEC but with spark plugs. Sometimes there's a spark, sometimes there isn't. And sometimes there's a spark but it doesn't ignite all the fuel. It just sets off a tiny explosion that pushes the pressure in the rest of the cylinder past the spontaneous ignition threshold. Then all of the rest of the gas ignites because of compression, not because of the spark. Well, I mean, because of the spark, but not directly because of the spark, more in like a butterfly effect sort of way. Ah. When you're driving, you might accelerate with spark ignition, normal car boom, then spark controlled compression ignition, and then cruise at the super lean sparkless HCCI. So many big words, man. I don't know these words. So this is basically the gist. I think that most of it is correct. There's like 10 million other things they did to make all of this work. Some of it they wouldn't share with us. Some of it I forgot. And the rest of it I did not understand. 
We were listening to engineers talk for about three hours. I felt like I had to raise my hand to go to the bathroom. Turns out I didn't. Jesse was super embarrassed and I was like, hey, if you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best. And Jesse's all, dude, what are you doing? We're not boyfriend and boyfriend and you're yelling in the middle of this press thing. Anyway, all of the tech that went into this weird engine is truly mind boggling. The most impressive thing is that it feels normal. It's not the fastest thing on the road, not even close. But the fact that it's so forward thinking and based on the idea of having an efficient car that's super fun to drive, that's absolutely exciting. Yo, thanks for watching the new car show. Hit that subscribe button. The more subscribers we get, the more cool stuff we get to do. You wanna learn more about combustion? Watch this episode of Science Garage where me and Bart blow up some stuff and Bart talks smart things. You wanna know why I do this? It's to feed my son, Nolan. Check out this episode of his show, Wheelhouse. Follow me on Instagram, at James Humphrey. Follow Donut on Instagram, at Donut Media. Go buy yourself some merch, shop.donut.media. I love you. <laughs>